actually, I think I reposted some of your stuff recently too. So on Insta, Insta Twit Face, right? <laughs> All right. So stiff upper back, um, or stiff back, or is it upper, or where is it? About like hip issues. Is yes. When I'm flat presenting. Okay. Um, for like the last two years, like any kind of conventional deadlift or pick up between the legs, stone, sandbags. Yes. But I've been getting the symptoms here. Okay. And I was treating the hips for ages, whereas actually I have a better success actually treating the, the back. Well, it's a combo, and a lot of times what happens is things get kind of you know misconfigured, misunderstood in in the in those presentations. Yeah. What I'm finding is, is I'm finding a lot of people having external rotation, yeah. right, of the, well, we'll, we'll say the opening up, if you will, the hips. And that's basically um, due to a lot of sitting. You know, a lot of us are, you know, our work position sitting, our, um, um, our, you know, recreation sitting, a lot of it's sitting. So what's happening is, is it's quite the opposite of the way a lot of people are thinking. So most often, if you have the piriformis that goes into spasm, people do a piriformis stretch, yeah, okay? Course, but the piriformis does internal rotation of the hip, yeah, right? That's what I'm missing. The, yes. Uh, so muscle. this is something that needs to be worked on yeah. all the time. And a lot of times what you'll notice is, is when you go ahead and you do that, you'll feel this pull in the adductor, mm -hmm. in the pectineus, and then also clunk the knee, okay? Mm -hmm. But you can actually have that piriformis go into a spasm yeah. because this is its normal motion. So it gets spasmed here. So if you go ahead and you treat it here, you're not fixing it. So you have to get the internal rotation back, which could be coming out of the pubis as well. The irritation that you're talking about very often comes off of the ilium into the ribs. These ribs float right here, the last three, right? So the ilia costalis, meaning from the ilium to the ribs, can go into spasms because your hips are locked. Isn't that wild? So you see how all this gait cycle starts, you know, you know, piling on kinetically, you know, via the kinetic chain. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you, especially in lieu of what you just said and why you have the irritation in through here, because this here is trying to lock up. So, so I've, been, I've, I've seen to have better success rather than trying to improve the internal rotation mm -hmm. in, in isolation. Yeah. Like actually getting the, the kind of vertebrae out of ex locked in extension. If you yes. Know and just getting a bit more flexion and that's allowing the, the, the hips to move into internal rotation. Okay, like yeah, because you have a psoas component too, or hip flexor, right? And then the hip flexor, when those go into spasms, you'll have a reciprocal spasm, if you will, for splinting yeah. into the erectors and also the QLs. Yeah, cool. So it's a mishmash yeah. of a lot of stuff. This keeps locking up. Do you have, has anybody done any x-rays? Um, I've had x-ray of the hip, which has come up with a, um, Cam deformity. Okay. Is it, a, yeah. like, is it like a little growth on the acetabulum? Or can be. Yeah, yeah, they can be. Um, did they do side x-rays also? Or they just do? Because a lot of times what we're finding is, is doctors all over the place are doing like one shot. Yeah. And it requires more than one shot to be a good film. Because we want to see if you're flattening in through here yeah. or it's rounding in here. Right? Because okay. you can have what's called a junctional kyphosis too. So when you're doing deadlifts and things like that, you're already in here, yeah. right? And you can't go into extension yeah. because your bone formation is like this. Yeah. It's actually a form of scoliosis. Yeah. Well, so it's it, a hyperkyphosis. It, it, it be right here. Locking more into extension than flexion. Okay. That's what it seems. Let's see what we got. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's fun to talk about this yeah. because I, I love doing this and getting in there and engaging in it and sharing with you guys, you know, what's yeah. up. That, you know? that, that seems to be better if I can get this to not be so locked in extension okay. uh, or around here, then I, then I can like, it relieve some of the symptoms. Okay. The order I'm going to do is a little different than what I would normally do right. because a lot of times when you have that, a lot of times I'll do an old osteopathic move and open it up. But since the hips are a chronic issue as well, the SI joints in particular, yeah. let's see what we got. Ready? Which these have been a lot better since I've been... Yeah. Anyway, no, yeah. It's, it's good. It's good. No, we, we got to work together to get a feller fixed, right? Let's go and grab the handles there so I don't step on your fingers. Right here, Superman. Got it. Okay, let's do uh, raise your whole leg backwards, high as you can, the right leg. Got it. How about the other one now? Okay. Easier on that left side. You feel that? Yeah, I'm on the left side. Yeah. 
So is it stronger or is it locked or, you know, something else keeping you from it, right? Now, in through here, this leg is a little bit shorter, okay? So I'd say about a half inch. Another thing, too, is you toe out over here. I don't know if you wanted to look at that. You see that? Toe out. And so what I'll do is I'll check the second position because obviously it's short about a half an inch there and bring it into this position. And so it goes, I would say... It's probably almost three quarters, but the one thing that I'm taking note of in through here, Josh, is as I move, do you feel this stick? Look at that, yeah. that mal position there. Does that, do you feel pain in either one of those, buddy? Okay, so that's another not great thing, right? So what we have to do is we have to see how to unlock that too. Crazy stuff, eh? So now, come in through here, there's a, a groove here, you've got no groove here, okay? So what that tells me is that that sacrum is popped back on that right side. Come in through here, and it pushes here, does not push here. So it sticks and rotates. So right inferior, right post. Right post. So, hook in through here on that, and there's the other side of it. And you want to see the depth on this? You can see how deep I am on this side versus this one. I'm on where the hamstrings attach. That's called the ischial tube, right? Mm -hmm. So it tells me its pelvis is rocked this way, okay? So now that's an AS on that left. So left AS, and these are x-ray listings actually. So what I'm doing now, okay, now when I do this, where do you feel this? Do you feel this in the knee? Do you feel it in the groin? Where do you feel it? I don't really feel it, it just feels it's, like it. Is locked, isn't it? Okay, so we come over in here and you feel how this one moves easier. Any pain or anything in the groin here? Okay, interesting, isn't it? So this here suggests that that is closed down or is opened up on this joint, right? And it also smushes up in through here, which is kind of uh, textbooked as well. So uh, A S I N, uh, definitely right E X. And that EX will tie in with that knee or this knee. In this case, I think it ties in with this one. I mean, you could have an injury, could not have an injury. Either way, it's interesting, don't you think? I love it. So we get this here. All right. And I don't know if you can see my finger depth. So basically, that atlas is slid that way. So take that, and then that's rotated to the opposite direction. So ASL and then a PR. And then stuff in the middle, right? Okay, now another component is when he's lying here, he also, you can see his hip is elevated or posteriorly rotated on that right. So, post pelvic. Okay, wow, a lot of stuff you're bringing me. It's a potpourri of activity. Okay, so, so that's an AS. So let's slide this under here, buddy. Gotcha, all right? And then we're going to slide this under here, Josh. I know. Now, you might want to protect your junk a little bit there, right? You okay? All right. So right inferior, right post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide this over and up. Okay? Um, let me take it from this side. Move this into position. Do you feel that groove now? Maybe, maybe not. You're sticky there, man. That's been there a minute. There we go. We've got some give now. Okay, so now we've got a left ASIN. So I'm going to hook in here, take this in through here. Now, what that piriformis will stretch a little bit in through here because I'm going to block this, but I'm also going to take this and drop this. Uh-huh. So, you hanging in there? All right, now, that spasm's gone. Look at this. Okay? So that's good. Now, in conjunction with that, you can see how he's spinning now. Uh-huh. He's the other direction. He was right posterior, so now I'm finding more things, aren't I? So his leg length is even. 
he's even here. Do you, you see? Okay. So his right knee's still sticky. So what I'm going to do now, oh, you know why part of the reason it's there? I've got a block there. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that part. Okay, so I'm going to block this side now. And what I want to do here, yeah, now look how he squared up with yeah. the block. Now, the interesting thing is, is I blocked him into correction position. Okay, so, but that's why that block was there. My bad. Okay, now Josh, when I do this here, the goal is to close this. This will feel like it's on fire, all right? It also, at the same time, because I'm blocking, I'm also pushing this down this way to reset the hip. Are you okay? Yeah. I know. This is a different approach, my friend. But I'm here all weekend to get you through this. Is it on fire? Yeah, it is. Yeah, weird, right? Okay, so now, this is still really good, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that there, and I'm going to bump that trochanter just a little bit. All right, now, feel that knot, and feel this knot. This knot will go clear to the bottom of your fit, uh, feet, complements to the plantaris. So that's shutting down lymphatic flow, believe it or not. So, try not to kick me, because I already know you want to a little bit, because sometimes correction is not fun. Oof, all right. So now, let's see what the rotation is here. And I can feel that's a little sticky there. So let's go ahead and get that out of there for you. And I'm leaving him in the corrected position because I want him to unwind appropriately based upon the correction. Clunk. Did you feel that, buddy? And then, now the psoas attaches to like discs two, three, and four. Uh-huh. Yeah. A lot of rotation. I can hook right onto that spinous. That's one of your complaint areas, isn't it? Mm. You can see it. You can see that. So, what should, what, what should it be like? well, how about, how about, let me see if I can find one. This here, feel this? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's coming through here. And what we're finding right there, you don't feel that movement. Right. Feel the difference? So what we want to try and do is we want to have the articulation, the articulating surfaces or the joints moving within a normal set of parameters for you. So each bone is shaped a little different, right? So I'm going to slide that right in there. Just so you know, that's a, I know, I know, just breathe. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that was going to suck, didn't you? I mean, you had a name for it and everything. <laughs> you hanging in there? Just so you know, I, uh, I absolutely hate getting adjusted right there. All right, so we know these don't feel too bad now, but you feel these? Those are your scalenes. Those attach to the first and second ribs. So, as that is the case, I'm going to go ahead and reset these. You may feel that underneath your collarbones on the front side. So, we're going to bump it. And you feel it pull in your neck. Uh huh. It's nice because normally I have to do all this in 10 minutes to get you guys back out on the floor. Now, with this, look at the difference in this. And I mean, it's still there, but it at least starts to move now. So, which is common, you know, when you get that pelvis squared up. Okay, so let's go ahead and have you turn your head to the left. There you go. So we're gonna just hit this like a nail. There you go. Hold it right there. I'm gonna derotate it a little bit more. Whoop, whoop, come on now. Yeah. Good job. Nose in the center. Take a rest. Okay, 
A lot of connective stuff there, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and do nose to your right now. Go ahead and look to your right, John. It'll be all right. It's almost over, buddy. All right. Ka-chunk. Attaboy. Nose in the hole <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> ah. But you know what, though? The thing is, is I'm not moving it from, like, over here to over here. It's very, very slight, but it feels like I'm moving it this far, right? So, mm -hmm. well, that's grisly in there. Now, do you feel that in the back of your throat and your ears when I'm moving that? Isn't that weird? It's like, quit doing that, Doc. It's, it's crazy weird. All right. All right. Now, let's have you turn your nose to the right. And what we're going to do is going to set the whole row back under and those in the center. So you get the, de the, the things derotated, but boy, feel this and feel this. Where's all those knots, buddy? Yeah, I didn't give you a massage. All right, but you got a rib right here. Feel that little sucker? Mm-hmm. And gone. All right, now, what we're going to do now is we're going to try and reduce some of this, okay? I wouldn't do this in contest because it has a negative effect, but you have plenty of time to heal up from this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hang in there. Yeah. I am going to, yes. Yeah, but you know what, though? It might not be near as bad. So, ready? Here we go. Don't splint. That a boy. Don't splint. There you go. You knew what to expect on the other side, which is good. Woo! How you holding up, buddy? <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah. It's one of those things, isn't it? All right. Now, the hope is he looks good on the blocks, right? Yeah. So now let's see. He looks equally good there. Yeah, he's flat across. Look how natural his feet are lying now. And the twist is not quite as pronounced. Do you know what's cool about this is that what we're doing is, is objectifying what it is we do during treatment, you know? So it's a, you know, it's a resultant based thing, right? So the goal is, is to try and make his performance better, but also at the same time, you know, just doing things like this shows change, which is so fun, you know, it really is. Can you raise your right leg for me high as you can again? Good. How about the other one? Now, how did that feel? Yeah, different, yeah? Okay, so now listen, what I want you to do is, is I'm gonna have you, because this has been goofy for a long time, let's do some McKenzie type exercises real quick. So let's get on your knee, uh, hands and knees on the table. So just stop right there, there you go. Okay, so what we wanna do is, I like to say this is like dumping a bucket. So can you dump the bucket, your pelvis? No, dump it this way. There, just like that, and then bring it back up to where you're pick, filling the bucket. Just like that. Now that's different than trying to get it here, which I, but I'm not so concerned about this because this has been a tough locked area. Yeah. So all I want you to do is just put motion into that. So just go back and forth. And you, you, know, you don't have to do it for an hour or anything like that. How's that feel? It feels like fine and extension wise. Yeah. When I go and talk, I can feel like a bit of a pull. Uh -huh. So does it feel like you've got your motion back through those joints right now? Yeah, like this, this bit feels, yeah. feels free for sure. Yeah. So, you know, just reorienting where those joint plays are is so important when we're going in there. Plus, that also changes the nervous system. So the communication highway, right, sometimes it gets blocked. And so to varying degrees. So that's what we call the subluxation. So what do you think, man? Now, you know, the interesting thing is, is it's always different when the girls hold the cameras because us guys, we'd be back here. <laughs> okay, let's have you walk around a little bit, all right? Yeah, you got paper all over your face, so it looks like you just got through shaving a little bit. Yeah, I know. You know what? We're, but wait, there's more. 
I'm going to do is get your ankles too. So let's go ahead and have you sit right there and we're going to put your foot right there. Just one foot at a time though. Scoot back some more so your heel's right here. There you go. All right, so let's see what these things are. No, really? Really? I've like about 10 years ago, both sides have like ruptured the ankle ligaments. Yeah. You see how tight that is? So that there can change the. That's my good one. Yeah, great. Okay, well, guess what? More fun. So, now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm not moving it like this. Just in here, right? So, let's go ahead and move that around. It's almost like also, if you look at the foot, it's like the bottom portion of your foot is this way and the top foot's this way. Right? So, that ain't right. So what we're going to do, move them back together a little bit. See if that doesn't de-stress. Look at that. Just doing that little movement de-stressed it. So now what I want to do is, because that it's almost like that heel cups in like this. It scoops. So let's unscoop that. Okay. Feel how that's lightening? You know, the thing is... When people see me work, they're like, that didn't look like much. But look at that. That's the amazing thing. It doesn't fit. It's the how-to part, you know? And this is the stuff I, I, I want to teach because I think more people would use chiropractic if you had results like this every time. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and use the other foot. Now, you scoop on this side, too. But this foot looks more centered, right? right? <sighs> All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and scoop there. You all right? Feel that release? Yeah. This one's stiffer. Even though you said that's the injured ankle? Well, they've both been injured. Yeah. Yeah, but this is like, this feels feel really limited, um, like dorsiflexion range of motion. Yeah. If I go deep into a squat, the heel won't appear up on the side of your elbow. Right, and part of it's this. Yeah. So you're not sliding back. Completely locked in that. Yeah. And there's a nerve right on top of that, that sometimes if I hit that, people are like, that wasn't very comfortable. Yeah, I feel that movement. Yeah, feel that now? But it moves. So let's go ahead and change this a minute. Now walk around. Tell me what it feels like. Do you feel like you're floating now with your feet? Do you know we've actually it done? Like I've got like a range of, well, it feels like my knees will go. Yes. Will track without feeling the heel. Do you know I have the only study in the world that shows that there is a decrease in a balance, a decrease in the amount of pressure and force on each foot after I do this, and also a rebalancing in like 90%. It's the only exam in the world wow. that has that. It's on my website. So I'm showing the effectiveness of this care tactic. It's pretty cool. Go and try to do a couple of deep knee bends and some hip hinges. Tell me how that feels now. Like definitely a lot better than too short. Like usually to get to there, mm -hmm. like my heels are coming up. Now. Right, and right. Forward, like, so I can I usually need like to hold something in front yeah. to hit a deep squat. So. Isn't that fun? It's cool to watch, probably. It's for it's fun for me to do because I'm unraveling it. And I kind of have fun doing it. And then this here, like, you, you see me, I'm doing this like a couple of months ago. I'm like, yeah. So I can get. Now, the question is, is you know that stuck spot in that thoracolumbar range, how's that motion now? Well, yeah. Good. Yeah. So your flexion feels good, you got good rotation. A lot better, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
it's, it's been great because, I mean, you know, I don't know if you want to pan around. You can see the signatures of all the, the top strength athletes in the world, you know, that we've worked with over the years. I have three tables full of signatures, you know, and it's just so fun to be able to enhance their performance. And then, you know, in many instances, they've, you know, they've won the Arnolds. They've won, you know, World's Strongest Man in some cases. So, yeah, this is, this is great. Hope to make some more history with you guys. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. Thank you, Thank you for the opportunity. A little different than Grandma's chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs>